Hi, my name's Chris. Um, out here in Kingaroy, and for the last 18 months, this has been my project, the CNC Marine 8000 HP. It's a 8,000 hardtop. Um, it's eight metres from the bottom of the transom to the point of the hull. So it's 9.06 from the front of the bowsprit to the um, rear step. So just on nine metres overall. 2.7 metres wide. I think it's, oh, I can't remember the height now, 2.9 metres high roughly from the bottom of the keel to the top of the handrails on the roof. Um, the trailer, I don't even know. I never measured it. I can't remember what the measurements were, but it's a little bit longer than the boat, I suppose. Um, 2.5 wide to the outside, or 2.450 to the outside of the wheels. Um, quite a bit of clearance underneath it. I did that originally so I could go either torsion axles or springs. I uh, ended up going with the springs, the spring and uh, solid axles. Uh, 4.2 ton for the trailer, uh, so it's got a 70 mil hitch on it, which is a bit small for the old Colorado, so Colorado I'll tell it. The overall weight will be under three and a half ton, full of fuel and water. I don't know how it'll go there until I yeah, get it over the scales, but I'll be able to tail with Colorado. It's not much bigger than the caravan we had, just a little bit wider. So, um, yeah, the next investment might be a ram. We'll see how the Colorado goes. Yeah, so, so that, yeah, the aluminium weight is 1.7 tonne. The aluminium weight in the trailer, so the delivery dock at the invoice came, it was just on 400 kilos, and I haven't used all of, there's probably 50 kilos worth of aluminium still sitting in the corner. Um, the tyres, axles and springs sit at about 450 kilos, I think it is. Um, so I think the trailer is going to sit between the 8 to 900 kilo mark, 1700 kilos for the, uh, for the aluminium and probably I think the motor's 289 kilos, I'll say 200 kilos worth of batteries and accessories and bits and pieces inside the boat. Yep. Fuel, 600 litres of fuel, two 300 litre tanks, which will come in at 450 kilos. Um, it's, there's 110 litres of water under the floor. For POB is nine offshore. Um, probably wouldn't put nine on it, it'd be pretty cramped. Well, it wouldn't be cramped, there'd be plenty of room, but if you're trying to fish, you'd be getting the shits real quick with nine people out on the deck. But it'll comfortably fish four people offshore, six people if you're on the inside without tripping over each other. The, the gunnels are not quite three metres, I think it is 2.7 or something down the side, so plenty of room for a couple of people to stand along there and fish. Six mil, sides are five, cabins three and roofs three mil. I just wanted something that was comfortable for the whole family, you know, so we can take out, not just go fishing in it, but um, you know, take it out to Morton for a couple of nights and, and not be tripping over each other and, you know, yeah. well, I had a few, Specifics I wanted, which the cabin and the layout of the cabin and the deck space, and this is how big it ended up. Yeah, yeah no, so originally I sort of want to stick around that seven metre mark, but it just grew and grew, and I think it got a little bit smaller at one stage to where it is now. It was a bit bigger, it was wider. Um, yeah. Oh, I had a look at a lot of the different kit places online and since they were the only ones that had their prices on the website so you could sort of go through and have a look what price points were and without having to ring them and wait for quotes and all that sort of stuff so that was one of the biggest 
things that led me to go to CNC, so you, you could just have a look and get a rough estimate of what it was going to cost for the size of the boat without having to make a thousand phone calls, and yeah, we went from there. I had a rough, I knew what I wanted, rough idea of how I wanted it laid out, and um, yeah, just spoke with the guys at CNC, or spoke to Marsh, and went from there. It was good, yeah, so it was um, interesting just backwards and forwards with different ideas and the changes and um, yeah, I don't know, it was a while ago now, but it took about 10, 10 weeks or so because it was custom designed so it wasn't just off the shelf thing, so um, yeah, it would have been 10 weeks, 10 or so weeks backwards and forwards and I think I changed it a dozen times, especially the transom, we made a fair few changes to the transom, but yeah. yeah. You know, You've got to have some sort of limit. There is a limit, obviously. You've got to tow it around the streets. But um, I think everything I wanted, I got in the boat within the, the limits, and especially being able to get it in and out of the shed, that was another big thing. So, um, yeah, everything I wanted, and got. Yeah. Well, everything's supplied with the kit. So, all your handrails, the tubing, all your handrails are supplied. It's only the like the things you'll see inside, just some of the stainless handrails and stuff like that that I've added onto the dash that, that I had to buy extra. Um, but everything aluminium came with the kit, except for the few little things that I changed. Like I, I changed the that, I put a full half round on the keel all the way front to back, so I went and bought that, but it was supplied with a, a um, what was it, half box section to go on the, from the bottom here through to the back. Yeah, so that's the only real bit of aluminium that I went and bought to add on to the hull, except, sorry, I added those handrails which went in the design around the back. So obviously, you know, I had to go buy that aluminium. But, um, yeah, that's, yeah. But as per the design, yeah, everything was there to complete to the design. It's only the extra stuff they added on that I had to buy. That, that was one of the things that I wanted, specifically. So the cabin is sort of set out like a caravan type of thing. It's got a do you call it a cafe diner where you got the seat, seat and the table and the table will drop down into a bed. So that was one of the, the main things I wanted, which Marsh um, designed. Um, I wanted an enclosed cap. I had the window that I already wanted in the back and just gave them the dimensions and it just turned up. I already cut out the window, just slotted in there perfectly. It was like a millimetre around the outside. Yeah. I put the fridge, so yeah, the seat, the helm seat. Uh, I had a fridge that I wanted to put underneath there and it was designed to fit the fridge in there. Perfect, didn't it? Yeah. It's 130 litre fridge, so plenty. <laughs> well, these are the, they're the A3 plans you get off CNC Marine. Just step by step, put it together. Starting off with just all the pieces and there's a lot of pieces in it, a lot of little pieces. That's all the pieces. Yeah, pretty straightforward, yeah. Like the place the bottom sheets on level ground, chock the outer edges of the bottom plate, 340 mils, uh, 345 mils and tack together like it was. Just jacked them up, put a plank of wood under the side, got them all level, tacked them together. Uh, one little thing that I did have trouble with, I didn't realise is, so the hull isn't flat. They're not flat surfaces at the back. It's got that whole, the whole thing's got a curve in it. So when I got out to the end, there was that little bit of a gap and trying to work out how I was going to pull it up. Because six mil, you can't exactly just pull it with your hands and tack it in place. So little challenges like that, but worked them out in the end. Yeah. Just with a bloody ratchet strap and pulled in each individual piece up to the frame and to keep that curve that was in the design. Yeah. I started, uh, boiler making about 20 years ago and just started, I just did my Prevo course uh, through college uh, with a plan to go into a, an apprenticeship but um, I ended up not following it eventually so I only had that experience, 12 months of experience with MIG, TIG, Oxy welding, you know, a few bit of machine work um, 20 years ago and I suppose I always fit around doing a bit of welding here and there and yeah, yeah Marsh sent me a 3D PDF and you could always just get it up on the laptop and remove panels and have a look at things in finer details and, and then make measurements on the 3D PDF to see where things have got to sit and how they sit and yeah. Yeah, it was enough to, to do what you need to do. Like it's all, a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory. 
You know, there's um, a few little things you sort of had to work out, uh, but it was more so because it was custom, like the, it was the first one. You know, and the instructions, I think you sort of made them off a previous model. So there's a few little things I sort of had to look and had a good think about, but um, it was pretty straightforward and easy. Yeah. It's, um, it's achievable on your own. You know, it just takes a little bit longer and you just got to figure out how to do things you know, on your own. So. One of the hardest things was getting it from outside, inside. Like some of it I've moved myself with skateboards. You know, just a few skateboards under it and wheeled the sheets in, you know. But um, oh, we just cut it all out out of the sheets and just stacked it all up around walls, sort of in order. So we tried to as much as we could. And uh, yeah, went from there because it it's basically <clears throat> basically just myself. So we kind of put them in a way that I could get them without having to move. You know, 20 other pieces to get to the bit I needed. So, yeah. had a little bit of help from a few different people, just carrying in the big stuff. Getting the roof on was a big one. Had half a dozen people around here to help lift the roof, especially being that high, getting all the way up under there. Um, yeah, all the side sheets and that, I just hung bloody uh, endless chains from the roof and moved them around here with skateboards and winched them up the endless chains, put them in place. So. The only sort of help I've had is, yeah, lifting the roof on and um, putting the boat onto the trailer and a couple of mates come around just to help me tinker around with little things, put the lining in the cabin and stuff like that. So, so once the kit turned up, uh, two of us, it took us two days to cut out all the pieces and move them inside and then it would have taken me about, oh, I'd say 10 to 11 months probably some more 10 months to build the, the hull, uh, just the aluminium work. Uh, I took two weeks off work to build the trailer, so I built the trailer in two weeks. So it was once everything turned up, I'd collected the aluminium and axles and everything turned up. Um, paint took me about eight weeks. Uh, the fit out, electronics, the wiring, all that's probably taken another yeah, two months thereabouts. So it's, yep, and then a bit of time off in between. And, I work an equal time roster, so I work seven days in a fortnight and probably spend six to eight hours a day in the shed, but probably only half of that time working on the boat. The rest of the time thinking about how I'm going to do something or, you know, yeah. I think it was once I went and cut my arm, I had a month off, sort of not really doing much on it, and then here and there I've taken a week break from it. So, uh, so once the windows goes in, I've only got a a little bit of work to do with the wiring, just routing some of the battery cables. Um, just got to finish off the trailer, brake lines and mud guards, and put the lights on it. You know, if I had a month off work, I'd finish it. But hoping to have it on the water by Christmas, hopefully, depending on the windows. The motor's sitting down at Tinkham Bay Marine, uh, ready to be fitted. I've got all the, everything else is already fitted. You sent all the steering and gauges and everything, so that's all in, ready to go. So I just got to bolt the motor on and water test it and do the prop exchange and stuff like that. And I'm hoping by Christmas, but uh, my goal was February, so yeah, don't get it on by Christmas and yeah, February. Um, issues. Doing it on your own, obviously it's tough work, moving the heavy stuff around and and it's there's a lot of work in it on your own, you know. Um, other issues. Being living out here, you can't just, we got a BCF, but there's no other channel or shops around. You can't just go down there and look on the shelves to find the things you need. It's just online, just looking for hours for little things you want, or you know, you've got an idea and you've got to figure out how to do it. You know, we're pretty lucky we've got a lot of farms around here, so we've got a lot of shops that have got a lot of stuff in them. You, know, you don't have to go, like I notice you go down the coast and you've got to go from one shop to another to find little things. You go here and you've got one shop that's got just about everything. But um, just trying to figure out what you want to achieve and you know the things you need to do it that's that's been a bit of a challenge um, obviously my arm that was that, that slowed me down a little bit with the um, with the anger grinder yeah hit myself with a carbide blade which put me in hospital for a little while and and slowed the build down for about a month but um, windows windows have been a nightmare everyone's so busy in the industry trying to get quotes and that's pretty much what stopped me from getting it on the water now, it's just windows. So. One of the hard things being out here, there's not a lot of big industries with the machines you need 
for the bending, you know. So you need a pretty big press brake to, to bend the sheet, especially with a one inch die and having, you know, people have got them around here, but only smaller machines, you know, not with the big dies. So that was a little bit, a little bit of difficulty I had trying to organise that stuff. Steps, I had a little bit of trouble with that, just with buckling and warping, but it took a little bit to fix it up, but fix it up in the end. I expected to, to get some sort of warping inside, this being such a big sheet and, and obviously not building boats all the time. You know, those guys that build them all the time are just, they're artists, you know. They, they know exact settings they need on the welder and, and I don't know, sort of how I control it. it was just doing short little, you can see all under here, just everywhere I just did like, you know, 200 mil at a time to try and prevent that heat. And the welder itself, you know, the pulse mean keeps a lot of the heat out compared to old transmit. So. Did as much as I could, and you know, with what experience I had to, to keep the heat out of it and without stuff buckling. And, um, yeah, after looking, obviously this year with the coronavirus, made boat shows to go and look at boats and get ideas and, and just to see how they've done things. I went to the boat show last year and, and had a look at a lot of aluminium trailers, got underneath them and just seen how they made the trailers. Um, I had a look at the welds and, and stuff on, on some boats. and. Um, after looking at a few professionally built boats, I think I haven't done too bad. I looked at building a boat, a few people said, oh, you'll never be able to insure it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but looking around, so there is, there's Nautilus insurance. Was it Nautilus? That, that recognised CNC Marine and there's no dramas insuring it. I think maybe through Club Marine it's a little bit harder without, like you've still got to go get a, um, just a pre-insurance survey. Is that what they call it? I don't know what it's called. Yeah, they know just, so they for uh, seaworthiness for the insurance company and yeah, so it's not a, not a hell of a lot of drama getting them insured by building it yourself. Skill set, you know, as long as you can weld, well you don't even need to be able to weld, just learn how to weld. There's plenty of courses you can go do, you know, there are some specific boat building courses you can go do or you know, teach you the basics. Uh, but if you can weld, it makes it a lot bloody easier to, to at least make a start. And buy a heap of scrap, like, oh not scrap, I went and bought a whole heap of plate and cut it all up into you know, one foot long, 300 mil pieces, and just played with different settings on the welder and then put them into the press and broke them to make sure, you know, and the surprise the welder looked great, put it in the press and it would break really easy. You know? So it takes a little bit of change in the setting of the welder to get better penetration to where you know, it doesn't break. I did have it here somewhere. I had some pieces where just two, the welds looked identical but had a different setting and put one piece in the, the press and it was uh, just a, it was just, what do you call it, a fillet weld in there, like that. Put it in the press and it just snapped. Um, tore through the weld and then different setting and put it in the press and it actually folded the six mil plate all the way over and flattened the weld didn't let go. So, you know, just trial and error, playing around with the settings on the welder and, and writing them down, keeping note of you know, what settings you're using for different thickness of sheet, you know, so I did it with 6mm to 6mm, um, what do you got, 4mm in the side, so 6 to 4, um, just all different thicknesses and figured out what settings I needed for each thickness and wrote them down and then there's, eventually by the time I was halfway through the boat I can remember and know where I had to set it, but you know, to start off with I just go back and do the paper and change it and do it well, and not only that, it's sort of it was easier to make the mistakes and have the shitty looking welds on the test strips, you know, the, the test plates to get them right, than to try and figure it out while I'm doing the boat and make a fucking dog's breakfast of it, you know, so, yeah. Um, just make sure you, you know what you want before you invest and, in, you know, get it all sorted out. Like I said, talk to the guys down at CNC if you want something changed. Much easier just to get something changed and have it cut that way than trying to manufacture it afterwards, you know, because it's just, if you have a design, it just, it just slips into place, you know. Um, if you're going to spend nearly two years and a lot of money building something yourself, you want to make sure you're building what you want. Like, I wasn't just going to go buy a kit and put it together and not be what I wanted and, you know, two years down the track, you know, changing stuff. So. So I figured if I was going to do it, I was going to get exactly what I wanted from day dot, get it the way I wanted it, and it took a little while, but that's what we, yeah, that's what we end up with. 
get yourself a budget and, and try and stick to it. Like, you don't have the money to, you know, you might have a dream of building this whopping big boat, but you don't have the budget for it, you're going to end up with a half finished project that someone else is going to have to finish, you know, you're not going to be able to afford to finish it. Um, you know, stick to your budget, get what you want within that budget and go from there. Like, poor man pays twice. If you haven't got the right budget and you go putting cheap shit in the boat, six months down the track you're going to be replacing it and it'll cost you twice as much in the end. So, you know, work out your budget from the start and stick to it. I've heard a few horror stories where people have started and just blown their budget way out to, to finish it and probably didn't so much blow their budget out, their budget just wasn't enough for what they wanted to do, you know. So, just sit down, I don't know, a spreadsheet and, and roughly estimate what each thing's going to cost and I started with obviously the rough price of the kit from the, the website, um, knew what the motors are going to cost, you know, you can get that offline, online pretty easy, what electronics I wanted and then, you know, I had a portion there to the side on, on what else I needed to spend to finish off. There's a lot of little things, you got even little hinges, latches, buddy, wiring, connectors and, and all those you know, little fuse boxes, all that little stuff you don't think of, it all adds up in the end, you know, so you need to have a, a portion of your budget to allow for that sort of stuff. You know. I'm sitting pretty well on budget, there's little things that are probably, which I haven't even added up, like just $20 here, $50 there if I go downtown and need a little, uh, yeah, so most of it's tools, things that I've got on board, but I'm going to keep them forever and use them for more than just this thing, you know, so. You know, a lot of those sort of things that add up, but I'll yeah, keep them forever. Um, it was Adam from CADX Boats sent me a message. You know, said just make sure you do this you know, while you're building it. And that was to, to level up, putting the stands, car stands onto the side to, to get it level, you know. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons sort of why I did the blog, the, the Facebook page. And uh, I think it's a bit of nearly 1,100 people on it now, and I've got a whole heap of help just from, you know, builders, if I'm doing something, they see the photos, they'll send me a message, hey, just give this a go instead or try this, it'll look a bit better. And especially with the front handrails and yeah, leveling the boat up and just little bits and pieces and I'd ask some questions every now and then and they, yeah, a lot of them are really helpful, yeah. They'd um, in, yeah, message back. Because obviously the instructions give you the, um, like the bottom sheets, the millimetres to lift the sides up to start well and put the frames in. But then beyond that, you know, you'd think you'd just start welding it up and it'd stay square, but the heat and that it doesn't, it, it does pull. And it has pulled a little bit one way, um, but the car stands, if I didn't know about the car stands, it probably yeah, could have gone a lot worse. So. You need somewhere to do it, obviously. Um, depending, you know, depending on what size boat you, you're going to build, you need you need somewhere to, to build it. And you don't want to be building it outside. Like The time it's going to take you to build it on your own, if you do it outside, you'd run into all sorts of dramas with oxidisation and trying to weld it. and you know, keeping it indoors out of the weather and you know that's one thing um, it's uh, boat building with aluminium by Stephen F Pollard so it's got a lot of good info in it uh, it goes right through from the start from actually drawing a boat onto the sheets like the panels on the sheet and cutting out by hand so um, it's got a heap of good info in there and just different machines and different ways to, to do things um, right into wiring as well. No. A little bit of stuff on electrics, but um, and sequence, welding sequences and stuff like that, and trying to minimize the distortion by, yeah. Oh, the front of the book, yes, that's it there. So it wasn't too expensive, and it's got a lot of good information on it. There's a lot of, a lot of other books out there you can buy, but a lot of blogs as well, oh, not blogs, um, forums and stuff. But you only got to type it into Google what you're looking for, and it'll come up on half a different half a dozen different forums and you can just read through them and yeah yeah a lot of people ask how long it's taken so um, yeah since July last year 2019 we started um, oh yeah yeah they definitely ask how many hours um, put into it which I, I don't really know I sort of probably I work an equal time roster so I work seven days in a fortnight and probably spend six to eight hours a day in the shed but probably only half of that time working on the boat. So the rest of the time thinking about how I'm going to do something or, you know, yeah. Hardest thing, painting. I sort of, I like painted boats, but I kind of wish I'd just orbit all of it. I think it took me about eight weeks to, to sand it and paint it and 
for all the little bits and pieces, uh, which are just painful. I really don't envy those guys that paint stuff for a living. <laughs> Hard job. I had a, a you know, mate that I worked with who was a spray painter, gave me a fair bit of help and um, told me how to do things, which, which helped a lot. Um, cost. A lot of people ask me what the cost is, um, whether I've stuck the budget. Yeah, pretty much stuck the budget. I'm only about $1,000 over. Um, it'll go a little bit more by the time I put the windows in. Uh, but that includes the motor, electronics. Um, I went pretty heavy on the electronics. So if I had just gone for a normal package, it would have gone under my budget. But um, yeah. How much? Yeah, what's a kit cost? Which frustrates me a little bit because it's right on the website. You know, and that's like I say, that's one of the reasons why I went with um, CNC, is because the prices were right there. But that's probably one of the questions I get asked week in, week out. You know, what's the kit cost? And you just send them the CNC link. I had a lot of people ask me this one. I'd build a smaller one. Yeah. But I wouldn't build a bigger one again. Um, I've got a boat here, why sell it to build another one, you know? <laughs> but, uh, and, and I think if I had built a small one, I probably wouldn't have built a bigger one. Yeah, so I'm sort of glad I went with what I went with to start off with, because yeah, if I think I had built a small centre console, I wouldn't have then built a bigger one, but I'd definitely build a smaller one after building this, because it's going to be a lot less work. Well, I'm not going to take this thing up in the mangroves to throw out crab pots, you know, so yeah, probably just a small centre console down the track. Yeah. Thanks for following my project and coming to have a look. Uh, thanks to Marsh and the guys down at CNC Marine, they were a huge help in uh, designing the boat and uh, answering all my questions and putting up with me during the design process. Um, hoping to have the boat finished by Christmas, I'm hoping, uh, otherwise definitely by February, so yeah, might see us out on the water around Tinkan Bay, Rainbow Beach, Harvey Bay area. Um, yeah, follow the, the link to the build page on Facebook if you want to have a bit more of a look. And thanks. Thank you.